This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on the trapezoidal rule. But before we start this, let's discuss why it's important. To find a definite integral, we are examining the area under the curve. And our favorite model is to use the antiderivative and the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate that. But the problem with the fundamental theorem of calculus is most functions do not have an antiderivative. So if we want the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and we're unable to compute an antiderivative, we need other models. And the trapezoidal rule is one approximation scheme to find an approximate area under a curve of a given function, or an approximate integral from a to b of f of x dx. So we'll take a look at that strategy today and see how close we can get to the actual answers. So this is the traditional representation of a trapezoid. A trapezoid has two parallel bases, so base 1 and base 2 are parallel bases, and a height, that is the distance between those two parallel bases, known as perpendicular in each way. And if we have a trapezoid, we can find its area. The area is 1 half b1 plus b2 times h. Again, the area of this trapezoid is the average of these two parallel bases. So 1 half base 1 plus base 2, the average of the two parallel bases times the height. That's how we work that. But for the trapezoidal rule, our trapezoids don't look this way. The way we typically examine these things earlier on. Rather, the trapezoids look like this. So we're going to have some sort of a function. We're going to evaluate it at two points. We're going to connect those two points. And now we indeed have a trapezoid. But my parallel bases now are here. Here's base 1. Here's base 2. And the height is h. So in this example, base 1 is the value of the function at 1 is f of 1. And base 2 is the value of the function at 2. So if I want the area of this trapezoid, average of the bases, 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height, the height is this change in x, the difference of the two x values. 2 minus 1 would be 1 here. So here is a picture that sort of describes how we use the trapezoidal rule to approximate the area under a curve. Notice this picture area of this trapezoid approximates the area under the curve from 1 to 2. But typically what we do is we have some curve and the we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 trapezoids. The base or the height actually of the trapezoids of each one of these things is change in x. Here is the first parallel base, here is the second parallel base. So y naught, y1. The area of this first trapezoid would be 1 half y naught plus y1 times the height times change in x. So we got that, that's the area of a trapezoid 1. For trapezoid 2, same way, y1 is the first parallel base, y2 is the second parallel base. Average y1 plus y2 times this height distance times change in x. And it's similar for y2, notice y2. For trapezoid 3, 1, 2, trapezoid 3, y2 is the left base. y3 is the right base, average of the bases times the height times change in x. Area of trapezoid 4, y3 is one parallel base, y4 is the other parallel base, average of the bases times change in x, and y5, 1 half. First parallel base y4, second parallel base y5 times change in x. If I add all of these together, then I get an approximation for the area under the curve. Now this appears to be concave down, so it looks like our approximation will be an underestimate. Hopefully that's clear to you as I draw the straight line. I'm missing a little bit here because it is a concave down function. So those are my five trapezoids. I want to add all of those together. This area plus this area plus this area plus this area plus this area. You will notice each one of them has a one-half change in x. So I'm add, adding up these five pieces, I could factor out a one-half change in x. Then all I'm doing is adding up these pieces that are in the parentheses. So y naught plus y1. There's the half change in x. y1 plus y2, a half change in x. y2 plus y3, y3 plus y4, y4 plus y5. So adding all these up, adding up the five trapezoids, that's my area total. One half change in x, again, that's factored out, and then adding up all these things in the parentheses. 
But you'll notice y1 is there twice, y2 is there twice, y3 is there twice, y4 is there twice, but y0 is there only once, and y5 is there only once. So this is typically how we remember the formula for the trapezoidal rule. 1 half times the change in x, that's the width between the two trapezoids. Y0, our first y value, plus twice the next one, 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 plus 1 times the last one. So our first y value and our last y value are there once. Everything else is there twice. Hopefully you can see why in terms of how all of these pieces fit together. So here's our example, the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 to the x dx. Let's approximate this integral using the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4. So if n equals 4, we're breaking 0 to 1 into 4 pieces. So 0 to 1 into 4 pieces, each piece is a quarter. We can see that by saying change in x is upper limit 1 minus 0 lower limit divided by 4. Change in x is a quarter. So my first x value is 0, my next x value is a quarter, then a half, then 3 quarters, then 1. These are the x values that are on our number line. Our y values are values of that function, 2 to the x. So y sub 0 would be 2 to the 0. y sub 1 would be 2 to the 0.25, etc. So those are all of the y values. So we want to use a trapezoidal rule, which is what? 1 half change in x times y1 plus y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 plus 1 times y4. So here is our formula. So we're going to plug all those things in and see what we get. One half change in x, one half 0.25, y0, 2 to the 0, plus 2 times y1, 2 times 2 to the 0.25 plus 2 times y2, 2 times 2 to the 0.5, plus 2 times y3, 2 times 2 to the 0.75, plus 1 times 2 to the first. 1 times 2 to the 0, 1 times 2 to the first, 2 times all that stuff in the middle. You certainly need a calculator to approximate this. What do we get? We get approximation of 1.44630 from this. Now, this integral, the antiderivative of 2 to the x, is 2 to the x over natural log of 2. And our exact answer here is 1.4427. And you see that our approximation using the trapezoidal rule is pretty close to our exact answer. But I want you to understand, in many cases, the antiderivative will be impossible to find. And you have to use a technique like the trapezoidal rule or some other numerical approximation. Okay, next up we're going to take the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of x. I want to approximate this integral by using the trapezoidal rule with n equals 6. So from 0 to 4, we're going to break it up into 6 pieces. Change in x, 4 minus 0 over 6, or 2 thirds. So what's x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5, x sub 6. x sub 0 is 0 x sub 1 is 2 thirds, then 4 thirds, then 6 thirds, then 8 thirds, then 10 thirds, then 12 thirds. So these are all the x values going up 2 thirds each time. 2 thirds, 4 thirds, 6 thirds is 2, 8 thirds, 10 thirds, 12 thirds is 4. Those are the x values. But I need y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, y sub 4, y sub 5, and y sub 6. y sub 0, square root of 0 y sub 1, square root of 2 thirds, y sub 2, square root of 4 thirds, y sub 3, square root of 2, y sub 4, square root of 8 thirds, y sub 5, square root of 10 thirds, y sub 6, square root of 4, also known as 2. So those are all of the y values. We want to use the trapezoidal rule. Change in x times 1 half, that's what it starts with, then 1y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 plus 2y4 plus 2y5 plus 1y6. So 1 half times the change in x, 1 half times 2 thirds, root 0, 2 times root 2 thirds, 2 times root 4 thirds, 2 times root 6 thirds, 2 times root 2, 2 times root 8 thirds, 2 times root 10 thirds, 1 times root 4. 
So plugging all that stuff in, we get something that certainly will need a calculator for us to approximate. So let's do that. The approximate value that I get is 5.2294. But this is one that we could have done using an antiderivative. So let's see how good our approximation is by running through this process using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I start with this. That, of course, is integral of x to the 1 half, power rule, x to the 3 halves over 3 halves, evaluated from 0 to 4. So that's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves from 0 to 4. So 2 thirds 4 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds 0 to the 3 halves. Let's see, 4 to the 3 halves, 4 to the 1 half is 2, 2 to the third is 8, minus 0, 8 times 2 thirds, 16 thirds, 5 and third. Okay, so how good was our approximation with six trapezoids? What did we have? We had 5.2294. Well, it's in the neighborhood. It's not great. 5.2294 compared to 5.333, not great, but it's certainly in the neighborhood. And if we wanted a better approximation, we could use more than six trapezoids. Let's go ahead and do one more problem. Integral from zero to pi of sine x dx. I want to approximate this integral using the trapezoidal rule with n is six. So what's our change in x? Pi minus zero is pi divided by six pieces. Pi minus zero over six. Pi over six is my change in x. So starting at zero, going to pi, stepping pi over six each time. Zero pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six, five pi over six, six pi over six. Of course, two pi over six is pi over three. Three pi over six is pi over two. 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3, and 6 pi over 6 is pi. Those are all of the x values. Now I need y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, y sub 4, y sub 5, y sub 6. Those are sine values for all of these things. Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 6, second quadrant, positive, same as, same as sine of pi over 6, a half. Sine of pi is 0. So now I have all of this. To finish this, I need to use what? I need to use 1 half times change in x, 1 times y0, plus 2 times y1, plus 2 times y2, plus 2 times y3, plus 2 times y4, plus 2 times y5, plus 1 times y6. There is our formula. Plugging all that stuff in, this is what we get. But notice how nice this is. 2 times a half is 1. 2 times root 3 over 2 is root 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times root 3 over 2 is root 3. And 2 times a half is 1. And this is probably going to be the easiest computational trapezoidal rule problem you could ever do. 2, 3, 4 here. Root 3 plus root 3. 4 plus 2 root 3. So we get pi over 12 times 4 plus 2 root 3, or 1.9541, is our approximation using six trapezoids. Now, how close is this to the actual answer? Well, I'm going to go from 0 to pi of sine x dx. Antiderivative using the fundamental theorem of calculus is negative cos x from 0 to pi. So the negative of cos pi minus cos 0, negative of negative 1 minus negative 1, negative of negative 2 is just 2. And 1.9541 is pretty close to 2. So with six trapezoids, we're able to get a fairly good approximation. Now, in each of the examples I've done in this video, we were able to find an antiderivative and check our results using the fundamental theorem of calculus. But the real power of the trapezoidal rule and other numerical methods is you can approximate the area under the curve without finding an antiderivative. And that will conclude this lesson.